When you look at how power, the average power, and the reactive power are defined, we see they're very much similar. Both of them have the product of V effective times I effective multiplied by then either the cosine of theta for P or the sine of theta for Q. That causes us to think of, of combining these terms into a complex number called S, where S is equal to P plus JQ. When we do that in the complex plane, the real part of S is the average power. The imaginary part of S is the reactive power. By doing that, let's just see what this angle of S is then. Let's convert this to polar coordinates. Replacing P and Q with their definitions, we have that S is equal to V effective I effective cosine theta plus V effective I effective J times V effective I effective sine theta. Factor out the V effective I effective and we're left with cosine of theta plus J sine theta or that's just the polar angle form. So rectangular coordinates, uh, rectangular polar, then this theta is nothing more, or not nothing more, this theta is theta V minus theta I. It's the power factor angle. And we're also going to define the magnitude of S, this V effective I effective. To, we're going to call it the apparent power. And we'll see why here in just a second. But first, let's talk about the units of S. S is yet a third form of power. We have the average power, which gave, we gave the units of watts. We have the reactive power, which we gave the units of var. And we gave them separate units, even though they were power expressions, we gave them different types of units to distinguish between these different types of power. Similarly, we're going to give S its own set of units. Again, it's a power expression. But to distinguish them from average power watts, reactive power var, the units of S are known as volt amps. Frequently, equipment will be specified in terms of its S or volt amps transformers, motors, um, generators are frequently specified in volt amps, like a 5 kVA uh, generator would be a generator that's capable of generating 5 kilovolt amps of complex power. Now this graph over here is known as the power triangle. It shows us that S contains all of the salient components of power that we've been talking about. S is a composite of the real power, the imaginary power. The angle of S is the power factor angle. We've defined the magnitude of S to be the apparent power. Now, why the apparent power? As you can see, as theta, which is theta V minus theta I, moves away from zero, the magnitude of S gets larger. Or to put it another way, when theta v equals theta i, theta is zero, and the apparent power is equal to the average power, or the average power is the apparent power. But as we start introducing a phase shift between the voltage and current so that theta is no longer zero, we start requiring a reactive component of power. The magnitude of S continues to expand as theta gets bigger and bigger. And thus we see that this apparent power is the amount of power that the load requires in order to produce or generate P watts of average power out of the system. So if you've got a motor, say for example, a five horsepower motor, the horsepower, the energy, the, the power that's converted from electrical power to mechanical power would be P. But if the current and voltage are not in phase with each other, in order to get that much average power, you would need to produce or provide to the load magnitude of S volt amps to get P. S then becomes a measure of the efficiency or an indicator of the efficiency of the circuit. 
In its best form, the circuit will be operating where theta i equals theta v, and the apparent power, the amount of power that must be put into the, sor into the uh, device to generate p watts out will be the same. Now, there's another form of S that's particularly useful when we do calculations. Continuing on from this, and writing it in its exponential form, we have that S is equal to V effective, I effective. That's just the magnitude of S. E to the J theta V minus theta I. Using the, the uh, product rule of exponents, we can break this out into E to the J theta V times E to the minus J theta sub I. Now combining this voltage phase term with its V effective and combining this current phase term with I effective, we have then S is equal to V effective E to the J theta V, which is just phasor V. And we have I effective E to the minus J theta I. Well, that's almost the current. It's, the, it's actually the complex conjugate of phasor I effective. Thus, S, the power, complex power, is equal to the product of the phasor voltage times not the phasor current, but the complex conjugate of the phasor current. And we'll see then that this, uh, that this form proves very useful in our calculations.